Buff Dude's Basement Gym, and today we're going to be doing stage two of the dumbbell program. You know, I'm pretty happy we developed these programs now. Dumbbells, body weight, you know, you don't really need a lot for these programs, which it is definitely coming in handy at this point in time. And we have a special guest. Oh, hey. <laughs> The first exercise on the list is going to be squat thrusters. Now this is an awesome exercise because it's really working the full body, not only the legs but the shoulders too, but as you can see we have a pretty short ceiling, we won't be able to get full extension in the shoulder press, so we're just going to be shortening the range of motion a little bit, which isn't a big deal. It's still getting a lot of work in the legs, still getting a lot of work in the shoulders, and it's a damn good one to start this workout off. As you can see we're starting a little light with this. Gonna kind of feel this out. Um, now the stance is gonna be a little bit wider than hip width, maybe even as wide as shoulder width. Um, kind of depends on your mobility, but you're gonna be squatting down with the dumbbells placed right at your shoulders, and then you're gonna be extending upwards and pressing. Now the pressing part is gonna be a little bit shorter, so you gotta watch that ceiling. Press right back down. It's kind of pretty fluid motion, as you can see. Oh yeah, a lot of work in the legs and shoulders. Ooh. Oh yeah, eight reps. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Now the trick is obviously having the dumbbells placed here might want to throw you off a little bit. So you're really gonna have to pull that chest upwards to make sure you have a pretty vertical torso. Um, so to find the placement of the dumbbells is gonna be a little important for you. For me, it feels pretty comfortable to really kind of pull my shoulders back, keep the dumbbells as far over the shoulders as I can, so that way down in this position, if you feel comfortable. It's not pulling your center of gravity away from you too much. It makes you want to fall over. Um, so you're really gonna have to kind of push your hips through to your legs to keep that proper positioning for the press. Whew, definitely a good one. <laughs> I gotta stare at that through the duration of my whole set. <laughs> Another day which is full body, which is great because we're really trying to get the most bang for our buck. And that's the thing, if you only have access to one pair of dumbbells, you can still do it, which is awesome. You know, in case maybe you don't have a lot of access to weights, in case you don't have a lot of money, that's the beauty of it. As long as you have that pair of dumbbells, then you're good to go. You can perform all these exercises, just like today. We're doing full body, sort of hitting legs, chest, back. If you have a limited schedule, you can still fit this in. A lot of us have quite a bit of free time now, so you can do this workout, take a day off, and then we're right back on a full body. Nice fluid tempo. Feels good. I think uh, getting a good warm up. Practice your mobility drills, definitely essential, especially with these kind of movements where you have to get that proper positioning, you know, hip mobility, ankle mobility. Um, once you kind of get through that, get a little bit better than that, something like this, these kind of movements will get a lot more comfortable for sure. But at first, it might feel a little awkward. So take it easy, maybe do it without weights, just to kind of feel it out. And as you can see, we have a pretty wide range of different dumbbells um, that go up to around 50 pounds or so. Not everyone has that. Maybe they only have one pair of dumbbells, and maybe it's pretty light too. It could be only 20 pounds, 25 pounds. So if you only have light dumbbells, just increase the amount of repetitions you do in these exercises to make them more difficult. So it's not always gonna be about the weight. It's gonna be about how far you push the exercise. So lighter weight, more reps, still get a damn good workout. I mentioned this in the last dumbbell video, but some of the best workouts we've ever had was just with one pair of dumbbells. So sometimes it can be a little bit of an excuse. I wish I could do a little bit more if I had access to a full gym or a cable machine or this and that, but don't underestimate the power of just a single pair of dumbbells because they can be more than enough to get you where you wanna be. And as you can tell by how out of breath I am, you can still get a damn good workout. Just finished with the squat thrusters. Kind of happy about that, very difficult. But we're moving on to the next exercise, which can be commando rows. Now this is primarily back but with a lot of emphasis also on your core as well, as we'll see in just a second, because you're gonna be in the push-up plank position, so your core is gonna have to be very much activated through this motion to help stabilize the spine in that plank position. But in the midst of that, you're also rowing the dumbbell up in alternating motion to really hit that back. So again, it's a very difficult exercise. It's a very bang for your buck movement because it works a lot, much like the squat thrusters. And that's why we included it in this program, but we'll get the position here. One thing that we really might recommend is get a wide stance. Feet really wide, that's gonna help stabilize you because as you row one side up, if your feet's too close, you're gonna wanna, you know, kind of tumble over a little bit. So nice wide stance and the dumbbells are gonna be placed a little inside shoulder. And then you're gonna be staying in this position. Try not to sag your hips 
or lift them up too much. Really try to keep them as straight as possible. Me rowing one side, and right onto the next. Key is to really try to get your elbows as high as you can without twisting your body. I'd say we got a bit of an advantage. We got the motivation, workout partners, all three of us here, hitting it hard, sweating, grunting, and kind of just cracking up here and there. But, uh, you know, it can be hard to work out from home, I feel like, it's almost like homeschooling. You know, a school, you go to a place, you study, there's teachers there to help you or motivate your other students, whatever it is. With homeschool, you're pretty much, you just have to motivate yourself. You have to keep yourself accountable. Working out at home is kind of similar to that. I mean, really, you know, you can kind of put it off. You can just drag your feet. Um, and you know, you're in your comfort, your own home, so you can sit on your couch, watch TV or whatever it is. Obviously, having a home gym like this is pretty awesome, but not everyone does. So it really is about you kicking your own ass, and that can be hard, but it's also very rewarding too, because it really teaches you not only to motivate yourself, to keep yourself accountable, but then maybe once you go back to a gym, you'll have all new respect, not only for yourself, but also for keeping in shape too. And, uh, and that's what I think we're learning from this as well and it's pretty awesome. It's very difficult, you'll especially feel it kind of in that oblique area, transverse abdominis, because that has to really engage as you row that up, because it's keeping you from doing this. So keep that chest pointed towards the floor in the whole duration of the exercise, and uh, you'll be feeling it. Next exercise is gonna be the floor press, and we're of course doing it with dumbbells. You can also perform these with a barbell, um, but that's what's awesome about exercises in general, is you can always kind of you know, make them work for you. There's a lot of variety in them. And with floor press is actually one of our favorite chest exercises. It's like the beginning evolution of the standard bench press. So it has a pretty cool history there. And what you'll notice in this is that the range of motion is definitely shorter. So you'll get into position on the floor, just act like the floor is your bench. And you're gonna kind of pull these dumbbells into position, kind of right above the shoulder there. Um, Nice and flat on the floor. And what you want to do is extend your legs out in front of you so you don't get any press with your feet. And then this is the starting position. Back your arms flat on the floor and you press to the top position. You want to go nice and slow on the way down and then touch the back of your arms completely on the floor and then press again. So as you can see, it's not getting the full stretch in the chest. So that's when you have to focus on really getting that nice contraction in there by changing the tempo nice and slow and getting a nice squeeze at the top as well. So you kind of bring those dumbbells together, squeeze the chest, really get that mind-muscle connection within the movement, and then keep that nice pacing and tempo up, eccentric, concentric, eccentric, and then you're done. Oh yeah, whew, I love these ones. Get a nice base of support with the floor. You can really feel the support in your shoulders too with the bench, it's a little bit more narrow, so sometimes it feels like your shoulders can be a little bit more you know, unstable in there with the floor, really pull the shoulders back, you have a nice big base of support with the flat floor to really kind of, kind of push yourself against. And again, really get that mind muscle connection in the chest, good squeeze at the top, and then slowly lift down to bottom position. Oh yeah, love these. Hang clean press is the next one, and gonna be the last big compound movement. Now with our low ceilings, as we had to adjust in the first exercise with the squat thrusters, we're gonna have to adjust the hang clean presses because we try to press the full amount, we're gonna put a light out or a hole in the ceiling and then Buff Duke's gonna have to fix it. So I don't think he wants that. So we're gonna be doing it on our knees. It changes it up a little bit. You're not gonna get really any extension in the knees or any um, plantar flexion in your feet. You're really just gonna be focusing on extension in the hip to create a little momentum to get the weight into the clean position. So you're really just grabbing two pairs of dumbbells that are, you know, decently light. Um, so we can get that form and function down and make sure you're doing it correctly. So you're gonna be kind of bowing forward, flexing in the hips. Just come down a few inches and be extending in the hips and pulling upwards and letting that carry that weight up to the shoulders there in the clean position. And then you're gonna be pressing up to the top position, letting it back down. Come gently, let it back down to that bottom position there. So it's a pretty quick movement and it might take a little practice. So definitely start lighter, even if you have to start with no weights to kind of get your position down and comfortability but uh, I think we're ready, so it's gonna be four sets of eight reps. This is not an exercise that I perform very often, and as Brandon was mentioning to me and Buff Dan earlier, it's a ballistic movement, so it's not only power, but it's speed, and when you combine those two things, form is definitely a factor because you really don't wanna screw anything up, so taking it very light is always key, 
learning the movement, learning the form, getting comfortable, and then slowly upping the weight because there's no sense in getting an injury, ego lifting, especially when you're at your own house. Take it light, take it easy, learn the form, and you're gonna get rewarded big time in the long run. Oh yeah, pretty exhausting. Now, some of the mistakes that can be made in this is not creating enough momentum with the hip extension and the beginning pull of this motion and you try to muscle the weights up to that top position. Now this can be pretty difficult if you're just trying to muscle it up um, because it's gonna take a lot of effort to externally rotate your shoulders up um, to that top position and then you know go from there. So you really wanna try to pop the hips out and just kind of little quick jerk here, kind of shrug the weights up and then let that one carry them up. Flip your wrists to that clean position and then you can do the pressing from there. And then when you internally rotate, take it easy and just make sure nice and fluid and catch it back down to the bottom position. So again, a little bit more of a complex movement. That's why it makes it a little bit more difficult, but damn, it's a hell of an exercise. Oh yeah, onto our favorites, arms. It's gonna be an isolation exercise. We're gonna do skull crushers. Definitely one of our favorite exercises for triceps, especially isolating them. And it's really working on the long head of the tricep. The long head of the tricep is a polyarticular muscle, meaning it's gonna span two joints. So when you put it in more of a stretch position, it's gonna have a lot more activation, engagement, and contraction in there. So we're gonna really take that dumbbell right to the sides of our heads, feel that stretch in the long head of the tricep, and extend to the top position here. Now you can do it on a bench, um, but to make it a little bit easier, so not everyone has a bench in their home, but you can do it on the floor. That's what's the great thing about this exercise, you can do this. And so, we got the dumbbells set up. Ooh. You can extend them up, just right in line with the shoulders. Gonna be flexing in the elbow joint here. Get a nice stretch in the triceps. And you can kind of bring it back if you want. Um, to once you extend it in this position, you're gonna feel a little bit more engagement than if you extend it to this position. So once you increase the angle here, it's gonna be a little bit more tension on the triceps throughout the full duration of the exercise. It makes it a little bit more difficult. You feel a little bit more stretch in there too. Ooh. Ooh. You can add in that little extra movement, a little rotation if you want. Ooh. Ooh. Again, upping the difficulty slightly. Ooh. Oh yeah, this feels good. Ooh. Ooh. And we're increasing the amount of repetitions, but decreasing the amount of sets. Since this is an isolation exercise, you know, it's since it's pinpointing a muscle group a little bit more than let's say a compound movement, um, the volume doesn't quite have to be as high as a compound to really get the most benefits since it's really trying to isolate the movement. You can decrease the sets a little bit, increase reps so that we can go a little lighter in the weight and really feel that mind-muscle connection. <sighs> Yeah. Just got the tricep pump, now it's time to pump up the biceps. We're gonna be doing supinating curls. Now supination is taking your palm um, from either a palm down or neutral position to your palm up. So this is supinating your forearm and you know, there's a few movements that the bicep helps with. Of course, elbow flexion is one of them, but supination is another. And that's why if you combine those two movements, you're definitely getting that much more benefit. And that's why we're gonna be doing the supinating curls, baby. Whew. Now we can do bilateral, same time, supinate up, and then back down, or you can do alternating. And the program doesn't specify, um, so it's really your choice. And like we said in the past, if you really start doing more of a unilateral exercise, concentrating on one side and then going on to the next, that can be a great way to help work out any asymmetrical problems that you might have, either one side being smaller or weaker. You know, you can kind of work in on that, target it, do a little extra reps on your less dominant side. Oh yeah. supinating definitely makes it more difficult. I always like to imagine my pinky meeting my shoulder. That really helps get that extreme supination. There's normal supination, then there's extreme supination. And that's what buff dudes do. Mind muscle connection. It's connected. It's like Bluetooth. Woo! <laughs>
Last exercise of this workout is going to be the Supermans. Now, this is primarily working on your lower back, the rector spinae muscles, but a little bit in your abdominal section too, and that's why we named it the core. So, we always try to finish off the workouts with an ab exercise or a core exercise, and the Supermans are going to be ending this workout. Now, they're pretty simple to do. You're just going to be laying on the floor in a prone position, feet straight out, hands straight out. And just like your Superman flying through the air, and you're going to be arching up your feet and your hands. You can make it a little easier by just doing your upper body, but to make it a little bit more difficult, you can do both. You're really gonna feel that lower back tighten up. Also in the little glutes too, and the shoulders for, you know, a little bit of work in there too, but primarily lower back. Oh, arch up, down, up, down. So pretty short range of motion, but it's very effective because you feel that burn in that lower back very quickly. These could also be called the Aquamans because it looks like you're a fish out of water. <laughs> yeah, oh, plus, plus, plus I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I just kind of my bladder. Yeah, a lot of pressure on the bladder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bladder poppers. There's a lot of different names for these, but you know, Superman's probably sound the best. When there's a wet spot down there, you know you popped your bladder. Not good. It's like a pregnant woman that her water broke, but in his case, it's his bladder. This is always like a 15 minute process between each take. Oh, cool. Whenever Brandon, it like I got a good workout. Whenever Brandon, <laughs> hair hair is ready. I feel like you're one of the plants, the turnips in Super Mario Brothers 2, and that they pull me out of the ground and I, I come out. That's how he was born. Like, <laughs> stop! <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> That's actually, you know, Buff Dad was out in the forest and he, you know, Oregon, a lot of mushrooms around. So he pulled That's where me out I came from. <laughs> Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the workout. Yeah. See you next stay time. Stay, stay buff, stay safe, and stay home. And stay six feet away from people. Yeah. Fuck! Yes! <laughs> God, you did that. You have sweat on me! Fuck!